the converted man here. Did you know that there are two ones, three twos, two fours, and two eights? Well, if you didn't, you do now. Well, you think about that. Let me reflect on a different sort of number. The number 200 plus something else. I think it's actually beyond 200 because I got like three subscribers and that sent me over 200. But I have now at least 200 subscribers. Actually, I have more. But I promised a really good, awesome friend of mine who will remain nameless. Hello? Hey, her name is Karen S. I said she would remain nameless. Ugh, I hate that guy. So, the video I promised that I would do is a video about Saite Brigagate. So, if anyone wants to complain, it's totally Karen's fault. I'm such a good friend. At any rate, here's the video. D converted man here. Saite Brigagate, however you say his name. Everyone has said something about him. Okay, not everyone, but a lot of people. A lot of people have said uh, stuff about him. Whether it's attacking his website, his character, his arguments, quote-unquote arguments. <laughs> Man, his arguments are so bad that they, like, implode upon themselves as they get pulled into a black hole that's being shopped into a blend matic blender thingy, and then that's thrown into a will it blend blender and then that's imploding as it explodes into a pile of steaming poop somehow that's how bad his arguments are i'm not sure that that whole analogy made sense but my goal in this video is to make the most amount of logical fallacies that beats all the other videos that have ever been so there Wait, no, then you have to be skeptical of my conclusions. All right, never mind. My new goal is to do something new about Psy that hasn't been done before. And I've really put a lot of thought into this. And I really thought, what is something that nobody has done? And then I realized, Psy uses this avatar on his website and sometimes on his videos of a tic-tac-toe board filled with X's. And the more I thought about this, the more I thought, man, Psy, on top of everything else, is a cheater at tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe! And I thought, I need to logically analyze this. I need to figure out what's going on. I need to explain tic-tac-toe in case nobody understands tic-tac-toe. So here it is, my logical analysis of Saite Brigigate's avatar thingy that sheets at tic-tac-toe. Okay, so this is the normal tic-tac-toe board that you start with, and there's nine different positions to take, and players take turns as X or as O. Now, after the first few games of tic-tac-toe, people usually realize that the best position to take is the center position. Whether you're playing X or O is irrelevant. This is the best spot to take. For this example, I'm going to be using X going first. So after X takes the center square, O has to take a turn. And it doesn't matter where O goes, whether it's here in the corner or in the center area, it's still the same. The pattern repeats if you rotate the board. So these are really the only two spots that O can take. So let's just say that O took the center area and X responds by taking this corner. The only move that O can make to stop X from winning is to take this corner. After that move, there's four positions that X should take. X should not take the blank position here because it doesn't yield even a potential win. So no matter what one of these places X takes, O can always counter it and will always counter it. And the game will always result in a tie. Also known as a cat's game. You draw a letter C on the entire board and then it's considered a tie and that's it. So the result of playing tic-tac-toe a few times for the novice player that's never before played tic-tac-toe is to eventually learn this concept of where and how to block the opponent from winning as well as that there really isn't a way to win this game. The best that anyone can do in this game is to tie the game. The only way that somebody can win is if the other player did not know the strategy of the game so if they didn't take the center square their first move which is the strategy of the game to do 
then the other player has a chance to win by taking a corner and then one of the other two corners and then they set up a position where no matter where O goes, they still have a chance to win. That's it. Their only way to win is when your opponent is inexperienced at this game. And the whole purpose of tic-tac-toe, from a gamer's perspective, which I am a gamer, is to introduce somebody to the basic mechanics of thinking ahead, planning ahead, learning to block, and learning different patterns to look for. And once you've learned how to tie the game, you don't need to play tic-tac-toe unless it's to teach somebody new. Saite Brigigit cheats at tic-tac-toe. He continually takes X all the time. It's like his turn. It's never his opponent's turn. So his opponent never gets even a chance at winning. What's worse is that Sai is cheating on top of cheating because once you get three X's or O's in a row, whether it be horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, you've won. But Sai continues playing even after he's won. So if you're not going to allow your opponent to take a turn, then this pattern or something similar to it is the best that you can do. Six amount of X's or O's on the board is the highest amount that you can have before taking another spot on the board would create a win for yourself, thus ending the game. You cannot have seven, eight, or nine X's on the board without having already won. Once you win, there's no point in continuing to play, even if you're just cheating. So, Sai Tae Brigger gets a cheater on top of a cheater. But he didn't have to be. If he wanted to create a symbol for his channel that had the tic-tac-toe grid, maybe he was going for the theme of X because X is also a cross, and he wanted to be a bit symbolistic there. Okay, but you can make a plus out of the X's, and that would look like a cross. And in fact, you can do so as you allow your opponent to take moves. These are moves that nobody would really take in reality, but at least you're not cheating. But I guess having something like this that took a little bit of thought on my part would just be too hard. It's so much easier to cheat and then cheat some more and pretend like you won, when in fact you haven't won. You haven't even actually played the game. My conclusion is that Saite Brigger cheats at tic-tac-toe. And then, even after he has cheated, he cheats some more. He can only win by cheating. So, now that this video is done, I wanted to thank my subscribers for being subscribers. I wanted to thank you, whoever you might be, for listening slash watching this entire video, for taking your time and energy to do that. I want to give an extra thank you if you take additional time and energy to type out and post a comment on this video. I appreciate that, even if I disagree with the comment. I wanted to thank you all for adding to my existence by your existence, by our interaction with each other. That's something that I am grateful for and that I want to use words to convey my gratitude back to you. If my humble words mean something to you emotionally, I hope that they do uplift you in this way. I try to be as logical as I can be. I try to remove emotion from the arguments. But at the end of the day, we are all feeling creatures. We are, at the end of the day, emotional creatures. We make mistakes. We aren't always logical. We get upset at ourselves, at others. And we really get upset when we can't control things. There's so much in life that we have no control over. And we like to think that we have control. And trying to control other people is just as going to drive you nuts. It's one thing to recognize intellectually that I cannot change anyone except for myself. And even that's somewhat limited. But it's another thing to accept it emotionally that that is reality. Through the years that I have gone through in my life, 
both as a believer and now as a skeptic, I have had good times and I have had bad times. Right now in my life, I seem to feel like I'm having more bad than good, and it is what it is. Life can be hard. Life can be difficult. But life is worthwhile because it is a journey and it is an experience. And it is something worth treasuring. And when we communicate to each other, whether it be in person or through the internet, we're adding to each other's lives in some way. And I think that that means something. I think that's important. Especially when we're learning something new from each other. That is something that I think is the best thing that we can do. Emotionally speaking, I think that love is a great thing to have. Love for yourself and love for your fellow human beings. There are people who are just jerks and scum and you can't love them and you shouldn't love them. You should avoid them and get away from them and try to, you know, get others to agree with that this is not something that we want to be like. But I think that the ideal to love everyone is something worthwhile to shoot for even if we'll never reach it as an ideal to strive for it works in reality doesn't play out that way we know that realistically you can't and shouldn't love every single person but idealistically if we all were this way that would be great and yes that comes a little bit from the christian religion but it comes from other religions as well and human secularism as well. So it's an idea that we humans have generated. It's an idea worthwhile. What I would say, if I may borrow from uh, the Bernard Russell interview, when he had two things that he wanted to say. One was intellectual, one was emotional. I want to switch that. I want to start with the emotional and then I'll go with the uh, intellectual. He had a, he had a, a moral thing to say. I would say love as many as you can, as much as you can, as often as you can, for as long as you can. That would be the emotional thing that I would want to impart to you. The intellectual thing that I would want to say is that if you don't have empirical evidence and you don't have any way to test it, then all you have is argumentation. And if you don't have a logically coherent argument, then you don't have any way to think that that thing is true. Your best bet is to be skeptical about it, whatever it might be. Even if it's something that in reality is real, it's safer to be skeptical than it is to just believe. You might be wrong, you might be right, there's no way to determine it without further investigation. So, unless and until you do that investigation, you should remain skeptical. And that's what I would want to say for the intellectual. Thank you again for listening, watching, and here's to 200 more subscribers. Woohoo! And eventually I'll get 500 likes on my video. And when I get 500 likes, I'll totally call into the atheist experience and I'll be like, "Here's my argument that Oh wait, that was that was that was somebody else. Never mind.